hi everyone uh, my name is priyanka and this video is brought to you by boss coder academy i'm a software engineer at sap labs and today we have piyush with us so let's welcome piyush hi piyush how are you hello priyanka i'm doing well how are you i'm doing great thank you thank you for joining us so no, no it's it's been a pleasure like uh, you invited me to have this amazing discussion with you so i am overwhelmed and uh, i am happy to be here Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Piyush, can you give a quick intro about yourself? Sure. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Piyush, and uh, I'm working with Google as a cloud support engineer. Uh, I have around uh, 11 plus years of experience in IT industry, and uh, in past five to six years, I have been working with the cloud and DevOps roles. So, I have transitioned from uh, production support role to DevOps, and then to cloud role. so yeah and uh, i'm also an aws community builder because i publish a lot of content around uh, different cloud technologies like aws gcp azure devops all those in my youtube channel as well as on various blogging platforms and uh, yeah so that's uh, that's pretty much about me okay thank you thank you piyush uh, and congratulations for your job in google thank so you. can you uh, tell me something about your role at google Sure. Um, so uh, my role is in uh, Google Cloud, where we help the Google Cloud customers in troubleshooting their issues, uh, specifically to their implementation and their uh, different products and services across Google Cloud. Um, like I work in uh, GKE, which is Google Kubernetes engine, so that's my area of expertise. And uh, any case or any uh, issue that a customer has related to uh, GKE, uh, so. me and my team like we work on it and help them provide the solution or uh, you know we just help them troubleshoot their case so that's uh, that's part of our primary job responsibilities and other than that i work on a uh, few other services like uh, uh, different devops tools cloud alerting monitoring uh, cloud logging all those tools so i help uh, customers on those as well and uh, yeah so that's uh, that's my day to day Uh, roles and responsibilities and uh, like in google for most of the roles uh, your primary role is to work on your primary project 80% of the time and rest 20% of the time you can work and contribute to any uh, available projects within google so i do contribute uh, in different other projects as well whether it's specific to you know uh, content creation like a public documentation update or i have also published a video on google cloud official youtube channel as well so i do contribute on other projects as well but that's just part of the rest of the 20% projects awesome awesome yes yeah. actually i've been following you on linkedin from a long time so yeah i i've seen your blogs yeah it's yeah. really nice thank you so, thank you for that so piyush i would like to ask you like as you mentioned you moved from a production support role to a mm-hmm. google cloud engineer so yep. can you talk about that transition how was it sure. was it smooth or uh, was it complex how is it yeah it, it took me few years actually when i was working into this production support role uh, i was uh, having a good exposure to you know linux administration unix and shell scripting and the operating system level concepts mm-hmm. and like all the hands on and everything but uh, i was not exposed to all other uh, you know modern tools and technologies that are there in the market so that's when uh, there was uh, in in my project there was opportunity to uh, implement jenkins ci cd using uh, like along with few other tools so that's when i started uh, looking into it i had some experience it was not a lot of experience but i had some but that helped me uh enough that i could know like okay this is my area of interest and this is something that i could see myself doing for the next few years so that's when it triggered me and that's when i started looking into it i started studying for it and then uh, finally i got a job as a devops consultant and then from there i started working on cloud i started some uh, freelancing projects on the side it was not allowed but then i started it on the side uh, to get some real time hands on experience Uh, so i got my aws experience from there and then uh, in my existing job i was working with uh, with azure cloud so i worked there for around 3 years i did a few azure certifications as well 
around six, seven of those. And I got pretty good hands-on on Azure. So I was ready for my next transition. So that's when um, a recruiter from Google Cloud reached out to me. And now I'm working with Google. So it, it took me a few years to uh, do that transition. And it was not just like I moved directly from production support to cloud. I moved from production support to a DevOps consultant role. And then uh, I worked in uh, Azure Cloud. And then uh, I was working as a DevOps tech lead for a couple of years. And then I moved to cloud. OK, great, great. Thank you so much, Piyush. Thank you for telling us. And uh, next, if I ask you, how was it the interview process for this role in Google? Okay. Can you explain that? Sure. So uh, I interviewed. Uh, like uh, I was interviewed around uh, like my interview process was uh, like this. So I got reached out by a recruiter. And uh, so he told me like there is this opportunity that we would like you to uh, apply for if you are interested. And I thought like uh, I'm not really qualified to be working in Google because when you uh, when you talk about Google, you you know, uh, you see a lot of things like uh, data structure algorithms and hardcore programming knowledge and expertise, and I didn't have those. Um, I was like, my area of expertise was into cloud and DevOps and anything related to that, but not uh, other than those things. So I was a little afraid and a little hesitant in the beginning. And then I, uh, I, I told the recruiter very frankly that this is what I'm capable of. And so if you are still interested, I can try, but uh, I don't see any uh, use of it. But then he told me that there are a few opportunities that does not requ require a, a lot of uh, coding and programming knowledge. Um, and it was one of these roles that I am still part of, cloud support engineering role. So that's when I tried to it. So there were, um, so first round with, with, uh, uh, was with the uh, recruiter itself. And then there was an interview loop, like five interviews back to back within a day. Each interview lasted around 50 minutes. And there was a break of 10 minutes in between those two interviews. Right? So uh, I don't really remember the sequence of the rounds, but uh, the rounds were mostly around, uh, there was a Linux troubleshooting round in which uh, a scenario was given to me and I had to troubleshoot and walk them through the steps of uh, what I'm going to do next. Mm -hmm. Then there was uh, one technical round in which uh, the questions were asked uh, mostly around computer fundamentals and Linux administration. And uh, then there was a code debugging round. Uh, basically, a code snippet was given to me in the preferred uh, programming language of my choice that I have opted earlier. And basically, I had to walk them through the code, dry run it, and find any you know possible errors or bugs in that. So those were three rounds. There were one round around Googliness and leadership principles. So Google has a few leadership principles, uh, which is also known as Google philosophy. And uh, we call it Googliness. So they just want to see whether uh, you exhibit those qualities or not. So there were around two type of questions in that round. Uh, one is hypothetical, where they would give you a hypothetical scenario, and you have to provide their answer based on your, um, based on uh, what you think sees fit for that. And there was a behavioral round in which they would give you a scenario that could have happened with you in the past. Like, tell me a time when something like this has happened to you, and what did you do, and what was your, uh, what was the outcome, and so on. So these are four rounds, and there was one more round, uh, which is uh, like a, a mixture of these rounds, right? And uh, then after a few days, there was a, a informal discussion with one of the hiring managers. And basically, uh, that was my opportunity to ask them any question that I could have related to the role, related to the team, and anything like that. And then um, my feedback, interview feedback and everything was provided to a hiring committee and they finally took some time and made the decision that, yeah, we're going to offer uh, this job to you. So that's that's how it happened. Because it was around, I guess, Christmas time. Uh, there was like a lot of people were on holidays at that time. So it took me around two, three months to get the uh, offer finally. But yeah, that's that's how it went. That's right, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so nice. Thank you so much, uh, Piyush, no for telling all this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And my next question would be, uh, like, as you mentioned, you're part of different community groups. So uh, 
could you please talk about it if somebody wants to join different community groups how sure. we can do it and sure. how much value it adds to your professional mm-hmm. career mm-hmm. growth yeah yeah i i personally am a huge advocate of uh, you know participating in communities and giving back to the communities through your learning knowledge skills and experience whatever you could um and i personally give a lot of credit to the community work uh, that helped me get into google you know because i never applied to google because i was so afraid that uh, there is no role in the google that could fit my expertise i am lacking far behind it so i i never really dared to apply but then because i was so active on linkedin and sharing my work uh, like my youtube videos and my uh, blogs and everything so uh, seeing that the recruiter reached out to me right and uh, because because uh, only those people can uh, share who have at least some knowledge and experience in the things that they are sharing so that's uh, that's what helped me and uh, that was one thing and then it started at that time and then uh, you know I, i started enjoying it because it was helping me as well as it was helping me in um in acquiring that knowledge first and then i could i could uh, you know transferring it to others like when you have to create a video or when you have to write a blog first you have to know the entire uh, background of that topic only then you will be able to create the content on that right so it was a win win situation for me and the community i was giving back to the community plus i was getting a lot of knowledge out of it and so that's uh, that's what uh, worked out well for me so i started with the aws community builder program because i started my journey with publishing aws content and uh, so i applied to that i got uh, uh, you know i got accepted to the community builder and uh, i so it also has a lot of benefits like they give you 500 dollar credits per year and uh, a lot of swags items a discounted price for reinvent tickets and uh, you know internal podcast uh, um, there was a professional and uh, associate level certification that you could do free of cost there are some other benefits as well so this is my third year into aws community builder even though i work for google i am still uh, participating in that program other than that uh, i am part of two community uh, one is growing tech community which i recently joined and uh, this is mostly focusing on uh, open source and uh, web development uh, so yeah that's that's it and the other community that i started recently it's called uh, the cloud ops community uh, and we are focusing mostly on cloud and devops so we recently started a challenge it's known as uh, 10 weeks of cloud ops challenge where we are giving tasks to everyone to build a project based on the requirement and then at the end of the week we are uh, reviewing it providing the feedback and finally deciding the winners um, there is a huge participation in that lot of people are enjoying it and many of us have already uh, gotten some internship and some jobs uh, by just completing those challenges so it's going really well and if anyone wants to join i will share the links with you all the links of the communities and how to apply for it it's pretty straight forward so yeah you can add that in the description section of your video yeah i'll be adding those links uh, thank you so much uh, i mean uh, the work you are doing is amazing and the the way you are giving back it to the community it's yeah. awesome yeah. i'm just trying yeah <laughs> yeah that's great actually you are helping people that's a really great initiative actually so the thing is i'll be uh, so sorry i'll cut this part so i'll be sharing the links in the description so you can follow piyush also on linkedin and you can join those groups for the community work so piyush if my next question would would be if you want to give some tips to the uh, folks who are new to the industry or who are who wants to be in google or probably in the cloud roles if mm-hmm. you have some important tips for sure. us yeah so uh, the tips that i would give on top of my head would be to get your basic straights like uh, there are few underrated skills which no one really focuses on and those really are helpful like linux administration um troubleshooting skills some soft skills and uh, you know uh, the computer fundamentals concept like basic system design concept and computer fundamentals like how a reverse proxy works how forward proxy work how internet works in its own like uh, when you type google.com in your web browser what actually happens 
what is three way handshaking and like all those computer fundamental concepts that is really helpful when you when you will be doing a troubleshooting um uh, in any of the company and it will be helpful in the interviews as well once you have those uh, basics cleared out right then i guess to pick a path if you are uh, going into a cloud or devops role mostly the roles and responsibility overlaps so i would say um, to start with git and github like understand the concepts create few pull requests try to merge your code and see how it works right then uh, go with uh, then pick any cloud provider aws or gcp or azure uh, pick any cloud provider and do at least uh, an associate level certification in that it will give you a road map to learn that cloud plus it will help you uh, plus also you should be doing the hands on on whatever you are learning and it will help you validate your skill sets when you add your uh, certification in your resume okay um, then the next part would be docker and kubernetes so these are must have for any cloud or devops role nowadays kubernetes can be done later on as well but docker you can you should have it because kubernetes itself is a huge topic and it's going to take at least 2 to 3 months to understand it completely end to end so that's why uh, i would suggest it to keep it at the end Uh, after docker you can start implementing some projects uh, using a ci cd tool such as jenkins or azure devops and uh, do the complete end to end implementation of the project write some blogs so that you could get some visibility uh, in the eyes of the uh, uh, the hiring managers and recruiters and then uh, and you also create some valuable artifact for you to refer in the future as well plus for the community who who are following you and then infrastructure as a code using terraform that's one of uh, another important uh, important tool that you should be uh, having experience and knowledge of then uh, monitoring alerting and debugging which is part part of uh, observability and so yes uh, there are open source tools in the market which you can use like prometheus grafana alert manager elk stack all those tools you can utilize it and um, let me think if i forget anything yeah i guess that's it and if you have time after that then definitely go for kubernetes and uh, and if if uh, specifically for google i would suggest you two extra things at least three extra things first is uh, the google sre principles this sre role if you have heard of site reliability engineer this was developed in google itself few years back and then other companies started adopting it and uh, so there is a sre handbook which you can go through and it has all the details like how to handle the incident what is sre what are the roles and responsibilities there are a lot of things in that i will share you the link it is publicly available so that sre handbook and uh, the google philosophy that we talked about in the beginning so you should be aware of those concepts as well and the third thing is try to give back to the community or try to create some valuable projects for the community um that would add some uh, extra edge to your resume and uh, you could show something like okay this is something that you have done that not a lot of people have done or that not a lot of people do these days right so yeah so these were all the tips and this is the road map that i would suggest to go for for any cloud or devops role if you are a beginner or even if you have some experience yeah thank you so much piyush for the detailed description on the road map and thank you for sharing your journey and uh, it was really nice talking to you and yeah thank you so much have a great thank day thank you Thank you so much Priyanka thanks for having me and uh, it was I really enjoyed the conversation and I hope uh, it was helpful uh, to those uh, who are listening to this video and uh, thank you so much thank you and one more thing i would like to add like uh, uh, i'll share the links in the description and for more uh, good blogs and all you can follow Piyush over linkedin and yeah thank you so much thank, thank you Priyanka Thank you.